Ahoy there, pirates. Captain Amir guy here, and as you can see right in front of you, today we'll be unboxing the Sea of Thieves role-playing game box set. Now, as a brief intro, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, I kind of picked this up because I'm actually a really big fan of the Sea of Thieves uh, video game. I've been playing it on PC since the beta and kind of off and on, and then when I got a group of friends into it finally after about a year or so, I've been kind of religiously playing it for the last two, two and a half years. And uh, we've been having a lot of fun with it. We play it, uh, I would probably say, at least twice a week, if not three or four times a week, depending on who's available. We kind of have a, like a rotation of six or seven people, so there's always four people on, so we're always kind of running a galleon and, uh, you know, getting up to piratey shenanigans and adventures. Um... The reason we kind of picked this up is I just, I found out about it late. I didn't know about it until I think probably six to eight months after the fact. And um, we're not big role playing, or what, how do you say it? Role players? Role playing game enthusiasts? Uh, we don't really play D&D type stuff. Uh, we've always been kind of big video game people. We've always known about D&D and uh, we dabbled in it just a slight, slight bit when we were younger. But um, we were just never well, comfortable with the role playing aspect. So we kind of just uh, never got seriously into it. But uh, when we found out about the role-playing game, we definitely decided we had to give this a shot because uh, it might be an easy way for us to get into it, especially since the um, system's already familiar to us, right? We've been playing the video game for two, two and a half years, so could be that bad, right? It should be pretty straightforward. Um, and also, I think we just kind of got to, all of us got to a mindset where we're like, okay, we're we understand what the game and the system is as far as role-playing games and Dungeons and & Dragons are concerned, so now we can kind of dev dive into it with a, the correct mindset. So um, just to let you know, I did uh, read the books that come with this. They, when I bought the, the collection from Mongoose Publishing, they uh, give you the option to buy both the PDF and the box set, and so while this was shipping to me, I read the books. So I'll give you kind of a, um, a hands-on preview of that, and then... Um, Probably publish a real review later on after I have my first few sessions with my uh, friends. Um, anyway, so let's just kind of get to the unboxing first. As you can see, everything's kind of sealed here tightly. So I am, I kind of want to just make a, a small niche somewhere and then kind of just peel off the plastic from there. So you probably can't see this on camera, but that's okay. You don't need to see <clears throat> a hairy guy trying to poke a hole in some plastic. There we go. Kind of excited because, uh, again, I'm doing this right in front of you guys, so I don't really... I mean, I, I'm aware of what the components are. I kind of read the product description. I'm not, you know, crazy, but... It's still exciting to see for the first time and hold all the components physically. So, there we go. There's that first seal gone. Now, I just remembered there's actually a um, DLC code that comes with this, so I might actually um, open this up real quick and grab that out, and then I'll be right back. So give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that was actually much faster than I thought. Um, I still left it in there. Uh, what I just did is I, 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 um, I was right, so as soon as I opened it, the code was actually facing the camera. So I don't know if I, when I'm going to redeem it, but um, I wanted to still show it off. So let's go ahead and uh, pack this open. I've literally only seen three seconds more than you guys have, so don't worry. So there's the box. It's actually pretty nice. Um, I don't know if I can show the gloss there, but um, it's got a nice little gloss sheen to the to the words, as well as the little skulls right there. The uh, inside is all white, so nothing, nothing to see there. Okay, so here we have the inside. So there is what I was talking about, the DLC that comes with the uh, box set. It's called the Lord Guardian Sales, and then the code is on the back. And sorry, I'm not going to show that off to you guys, but uh, you guys can imagine what a, a DLC code will look like. So I'll put that off to the side. And okay, so we have, let's go and start with the stuff down here. So we have the Pirate Legend dice, uh, or I'm sorry, this is a legendary dice. And um, they're kind of standard. You can you can really just use um, a normal six-sided die if you really wanted to, or if you just want to be cool and fancy, you can use these dice. Uh, they basically have three different um, symbols. So we have the bones, which uh, indicate um, a nothing. 
Actually, I don't remember that. Actually, I have to go double check the rules and make sure I have that correct. Uh, but we have bones, we have the doubloons, we have the skull, and we have the um, chest. So chest I definitely know is victory. This I definitely know is a failure. Uh, bones I believe count as a victory as well. I think the chest is a uh, victory plus um, something else of bonus that you can choose. That's actually correct. Yeah, and then the, uh, the skull is a failure and um something bad happening you basically kind of get to choose uh the the bones is just fail and then i believe the doubloons is just a flat win so yeah that's actually it right there okay so uh that's everything that right there and then yeah there's i believe let's see 18 of them so i see uh four by four that's 16 and then these two so that's 18 um and so you basically kind of give this. This is kind of like your everything dice. And what I mean by that, this counts for uh, a player's health and um, dice rolling and everything else uh, mechanics. So you kind of, these kind of go up and down as the game progresses. Okay, and then so we also have, let's start with these. Okay, I did not think these would be so hard to open, but uh, it's okay, I'll figure it out. Actually, a little bit smaller than I thought, uh, but that's probably fine considering how large the uh, the game map is and whatnot. Now, if it wasn't obvious from before, I don't think I explicitly said it, but this is based off of the video game 100%. So um, everything come from here, like including the art and stuff. Yeah, see, so like we have, uh, so this is the, oh, it's actually split into two, sorry. I realized, I thought this was all one thing. So let's start with this at first. Uh, so these are like the personality cards. Um, so uh, I know I was going to mention this afterward, after the unboxing, but uh, essentially the game kind of works as an intro to RPGs, which I think is really good. And it kind of um, reduces, it doesn't talk about the crun number crunch so much. It's really more focused on uh, cooperative gameplay and um, role play. And so these cards are meant to help you role play a little bit. And so what happens is you have an honor, or I'm sorry, a positive uh, personality trait on one side and a negative trait on the other. And so you kind of just, uh, you let the players choose what they want to be. So there's different combinations in here of everything. So like, for example, uh, there's honorable here and then um, a brutal. So you can flip these and based off of the situation, if you can convince the uh, GM, uh, you can get an additional die roll based off of which uh, card you have flipped over. Um, there's a bunch of these. I'm not going to read through all of them. Um, but like, um, yeah, there's there's a quite a few different uh, options there and you kind of just let the player choose or if they really want you can just assign them a random one that might be more fun if they're used to uh role playing games i guess and then here we have the item cards uh item cards are denoted with this uh, symbol here and they basically kind of have one of each weapon or you know what? i'm sorry it's not even just items it's weapon types so we have one two three four five six so six uh eye of reaches uh six pistols six uh, cutlasses and six uh, blunderbusses. Uh, you'll just note there's no cosmetics in this game, so everything kind of just looks the same, especially because it's a role-playing game, so cosmetics kind of don't have any value here as they do in a visual-centered game like a video game. But anyway, these are the items that, or I'm sorry, the weapons that your players can uh, equip and de-equip based off of the situation. So now here, I think we have, this is like the general deck. Uh, so these are like uh, quest objectives, uh, like the physical items that you can you can grab so like like i just showed you on the back um in cargo runs you can pick up the items um and that has like an effect so you can only hold certain items and perform certain actions based off of what you're actively doing in the game those are the type of limitations that the game places on you and so you and your team kind of have to get crafty with how you coordinate this stuff so yeah so looking at this I'll just pull half of them apart, but yeah, this is just a, basically a series of all the different uh, treasure types and items that you have. Oh yeah, right, I for, totally forgot about uh, the animal runs. I almost never do these, I hate them, so I usually just stick to the cargo runs and uh, the new like manifest voyages and whatnot. So, huh, I wonder, okay, so they're all labeled exactly the same. I kind of wish they had divvied it up based off of... Um, the quest objective type but that's okay it's not a big deal 
Uh, it would have been nice because that way I could have just split it up and then um, pulled from whatever one we need at this. Huh, you know what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so negative here. I wish they had um, organized this more correctly. Uh, like, basically, all of the cargoes next to each other, all of the um, skulls next to each other, all of the chest and chest types. Like, just kind of, if they had organized all that better, that would have been much nicer from a uh, GM's perspective. Maybe that's just me. You guys can let me know if you guys care or not, or probably don't care. But I like to have everything organized, so that would have helped. Now, let's take a look at, oh, okay, you know what, I did not anticipate for this. Uh, this is like the world map. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to, let me look at my table space. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do it here, but you can just trust me that this is the world map. Um, I'll show a little bit of it. Oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean to move the camera. Uh, but this is kind of like everything up to Devil's Roar at the moment. So um, this has this is, it's the entire world map, and it's labeled exactly the same using the the coordinate system that they have, and um, it's pretty big. I would say it's at least three feet on one side, probably by four feet on the other. Uh, so it is pretty large. I plan on getting the so there's the. Uh, with the box that they give you digital PDFs of everything and images, so I might just try to print this out. Uh, one other, and this is super specific, it's not a uh, major complaint, but uh, what minor pet peeve is I kind of like to have cloth uh, maps or some sort of more durable material than just paper, even poster paper, just because I kind of like to let um, the players handle this and stuff, and then paper tends to rip very easy, especially when you constantly open, fold it and unfold it over time. So that kind of, uh, Minor nuisance, but I'll I'll get it printed, I suppose. I kind of just expected that. Anyway, very few, I think, uh, major RPGs do that. I think you usually have to. Either you go, like, the more indie route, they'll tend to put a little bit more quality and care into their products so you can get a cloth mat, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, let's move along here. So we have... Oh, one of them already popped out, or is it just missing? That's hilarious. Okay. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's right here. Okay, um, so that's a token. Uh, if you weren't uh, familiar, so these are gold tokens. Each of these are worth 100 gold, and um, your pirates can earn these as they go along. Um, looks pretty good. No real, I just popped that one out, and there weren't any real uh, rough edges on it that I can see. No, yeah, it's actually pretty smooth. Oh, here's a little, a little, little bit. Um, I don't think I can get the camera to focus there. You see right there. The little tip, but that's not a big deal to me. I can live with that. Um, anyway, then we have the other tokens. We have, um, what is this? Oh, probably bullets. I guess because you remember you shot, um, yeah, bullets back then. It's probably not, um, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the, that's exactly what that is. I don't know what that, um, what this is supposed to symbolize, but um, the hammer, maybe, on a gun? I don't know. <laughs> and then we have the bananas for food would um for repairing the ship and then we have a cannibal uh stacks right there so um pretty good and then oh yeah you know what it's labeled on the back that's actually really nice that's a good positive um sometimes they usually just label like the same thing on both sides but this is actually nice that they have something different so this kind of clarifies it yeah so that's uh, ammunition right there food um wood and then a cannibal so that's a, that's great actually big big plus there i like that i approve rare i approve mongoose Sorry, Mongoose Publishing is the uh, company that made these. So anyway, we have a lot of these, or three of these to be exact. Um, it's pretty decent cardboard. I think this will last, especially when you pop them out. It shouldn't be too big of a problem. And let me put this over here. And next we have, ah, okay, the ledger boards. This is also something I kind of like. Um, I think coming in for new players, I think having physical components is really nice it helps them kind of get into the atmosphere of the game but this is the uh ledger hmm, i realized my camera i wonder if i can pull this back give me one second okay that's a little, a little bit better uh that's the uh pirate ledger board and so let me show you what it looks like so that's it right there so this kind of sits in front of every player and you get to designate a name for yourself, personality, your dice sit right here. Uh, what you have in the hold, I'll explain that a little bit later, but it's a game mechanic. Uh, your inventory in terms of what you are equipped with. Now this is interesting because I don't think there's cards and stuff for this, but uh, I'll have to uh, double check on that. Your gold pile, 
your um, equipment, or sorry, your inventory in general, your weapons that you can have, so either active or inactive, and then some general notes. So this is actually kind of nice. Um, it is just kind of card laminated cardboard, and I believe there should be six of these. So it supports up to six players with the base uh, game, and I suppose you'd have to buy more if you wanted more. Anyway. So that is the ledger set. So that's like basically your player boards. And then finally we have the books. Okay. Oh, okay. So these are a soft cover. You know what? I don't know why. For some reason I thought they might have been hard cover books, but um, that's fine. Soft cover is okay too, I guess. Um, let me move the box. I do like this little ribbon thing. It kind of helps us kind of get them out without damaging everything. Just a small like um, no small things like that actually help out a lot. But uh, let me. Let me start with, sorry, let me just adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, so the Book of Lore, this is essentially your uh, DM's guide, uh, or the DM for the guide would be more accurate, and like kind of the world building stuff. So this kind of just gives you, if you're not familiar with the Sea of Thieves world, it kind of explains everything and how to uh, basically GM in general. Uh, it'll show you how to create problems, which are the uh, situations that your characters have to tackle, how to build out the enemy characters, how to build out like uh, monsters and stuff to fight, how to sail, not that there's much to sailing, but how to create campaigns and whatnot, and uh, the general lore of the of the universe. So uh, there's it's a good amount of information. It's just enough to kind of get you started and then um, enough to kind of improvise off of that, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Um, yeah, so it gives you a bunch of characters here in, in here too. So a lot of a uh, visual, nice little visual components to help you and your players along, which I think is uh, is great. Of course, yeah, Kraken and Megalodon, the skeletons, yeah. So everything is kind of in there. It's really nice. Um, I like the glossiness of this. I just kind of wish again it was a hardcover. I would. I always like to pay extra to have like a nice. Um, solid like volume to be able to look at so i'm gonna put that off to the side okay so we have the uh book of pirates so this is how do i describe this so this is kind of like an intro for everybody this kind of uh, doubles as both a player handbook as well as a um beginner's guide for everyone including the dm and the players on how to start an adventure so this is kind of like your first time really you're going to be going through this book first and it kind of just gives you um an overview how to set the game up and uh, your first, uh, let's call it a voyage. It's called the Dead Man's Debt. Um, sorry, right there. Spoilers, I guess. Um, but yeah, it kind of gives you uh, an overview of all the components. There's the map right there. So um, yeah, it looks like a, either, oh, it's, it might be a perfect square, actually. It might be a three by three map. I think I said three by four. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it gives you all the components and uh, kind of walks you through step by step. It kind of gives you explanations of everything so you have just enough information to comfortably run the game and, you know, kind of role play as a pirate. Um, it's really good. I, I like it. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But yeah, that's basically what this does. It kind of gives you all the overview. It gives you like the little uh, tables and stuff for our monsters. And it shows you how to uh, calculate certain things here. And then finally, we have the Book of Voyages. This will be kind of like your uh, campaign book, I suppose. So if you don't want to make up your own adventures, it gives you a, a pretty hefty uh, set of materials to, to go off of. And there's a lot here, honestly. I, I mean, I, I guess it depends. But for an intro player, if, especially if you're new to the game. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find the table of contents. There we are. Um, there's a lot here. This could easily take you anywhere from well actually i don't know <laughs> i guess i'm new to it too but i just assumed based off of reading some of it that this could go anywhere from like and depending on how often you meet let's just say you do once or twice a month uh this could easily be like a six month long uh, endeavor if not longer i would imagine if you do one chapter per session then yeah this would even take um a good chunk of the year to kind of get through and there's a lot of material here and then you can kind of um wing stuff along or you know improvise new stuff in the middle to help um you know if your pirates are getting weak maybe send them on a side adventure to bulk them up before they move on to the next thing but this in and it of itself kind of um is a complete campaign if you want to call it that um it gives you multiple voyages 
And by the end of it, they should be able to become Pirate Legend. Well, just barely Pirate Legend. The thing is, they probably won't, but if they get a lot of lucky rolls, I'll explain that too about becoming Pirate Legend in a second. Um, but yeah, it's really great. I, again, I kind of wish it was a hardcover, but nothing nothing too bad there. Okay. So, um, just my final thoughts, or not final, I guess my first thoughts uh, before I actually run the campaign. I am putting the campaign together right now for my friends, and I'll know um probably by the end of july actually uh we're probably running in the mid july so then i will put my thoughts together put my dm notes together and then uh let you know sorry gm notes um but i think it from reading the books it seems like a great um sorry let me just uh, move components into the view i just realized you guys have nothing to look at <laughs> I think it, um, it works as a great intro to RPGs. Uh, really what it does well is that it de-emphasizes all of the number crunch and it focuses more on cooperation and role play. Um, what I mean by that is that you, you, it forces the team members, or sorry, the players to work as a team and communicate what ideas they're trying to get across or how to um, reach solutions to different problems and it penalizes them for not cooperating and so part of that ends up being the i mean it's definitely like on the dms or sorry the gm's role but they need to um get the group together and, and get them cooperating and working together and role play at the same time so whenever the basic uh system is that you have problems that you encounter and then you need to roll and create solutions or i guess i would say create solutions and then roll to um achieve solutions for those problems and so a lot of that in, uh, involves role play and communication with everybody else to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing um so it's really good on kind of focusing on the role play part even if you're over a little bit new it shouldn't be too hard to kind of get into it um i think it's great i think it'll be a super simple way and it's super flexible you can kind of have as few players as you want or as many players as you want because it's very easy to adjust the difficulty on the fly for uh, multiple people the um, campaign and quest system is very simple as well. Um, so the campaign, what I was talking about earlier, is kind of broken down into voyages, and that's kind of like a Sea of Thieves term. The voyages themselves are broken down into a series of quests, which can uh, range from anything from the three different factions. And so the three factions are the Gold Hoarders, the Merchants Alliance, and the Order of Souls. And so the Gold Hoarders, you kind of go after treasure chests, Oh, I'm sorry, you're drinking up treasure. It's probably a better, more accurate way to put that. For the Merchants Alliance, you are um, either transporting cargo or looking for livestock to capture either uh, chicken pigs or um, snakes. And then for the Order of Souls, you're hunting down those damn skeletons. So um, any kind of cursed, dangerous skeletons, those are, that's like the combat focus um, objectives. So there's a little bit of everything in there for everyone so if you have players that aren't focused on one thing you can kind of have them focus on one of the other factions or if they're fine with everything like we are we'll kind of dive into everything there and um this these uh, personality cards kind of help with that role play stuff so it'll kind of help if you are wanting to maybe do a more serious type or a role rpg in the later time like sorry in the future like a DD &D or something this i think is a great intro for that if they're into the pirates universe and they're okay with um role playing in that i think it's a fantastic way to kind of uh set them up for future D, &D type adventures and see if they actually like it and if they don't like it you kind of just jump away right you don't need to worry about trying to introduce them to D, &D. uh but if they do enjoy the mechanics and the system you can kind of then you know parlay them or segue them into something a little bit more uh maybe number crunchy or a little bit more serious or focused in uh whatever setting that they're um wanting to get into so anyway that's just my initial first thoughts i know this video went a little bit longer than i expected but uh if you have any questions comments or concerns definitely let me know in the comments below i'll be happy to answer whatever i can i have read the book so i can always do like a rule lookup if you had any questions or something but um yeah, I, I, so I, I think I'll be posting this video at the start of June. I'm literally recording this at the end of May right now, but um, I should be scheduling this at the start of June to post. I don't think we're going to start our adventure until July. So uh, sometime in July, I will have a update slash review of the systems of how things are going so far. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. Have a good Memorial weekend if I get this out in time and uh, have a good day. If nothing else, bye now.